Hello everybody! I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Uh, so before I proceed, I'm just going to remind you where we were last time. So I finished talking about quick sort. I'm going to be talking about another sorting algorithm here called merge sort. Now, quick sort and merge sort have a lot of similarities with each other. But at their heart, they're both recursive and they both use the divide and conquer algorithmic paradigm. So, so the algorithm design technique or paradigm, however you would like to think about it. Now, before I show you what merge sort is, I want to solve a different but related subproblem. And this is at the heart of merge sort. So we're going to consider uh, the following subproblem. So let's consider the following subproblem. So here's the idea. So imagine, imagine for my problem. So imagine I'm given a subarray where the indices go from P up to R, where this array is going to have a very special structure. It's going to have a very special structure we're going to use. where it has two sorted parts. A sub P all the way up to another integer Q. And A sub Q plus 1 all the way up to R. So I must stress that each of these is sorted, but may not necessarily be sorted across both subarrays. So just to make a picture, just to show you what I mean by this, I apologize. Somebody seems very excited about my sub problems here. So <laughs> let's so let's uh, let's talk about this. So imagine I have my array, and I have p. We'll get one more square here. So I'm going to have P, and then I'm going to have Q. But let me just fill in some of these with some numbers so, so we could talk about this. 4, 5, 7, 11. Uh, we're going to have this be where these two subarrays are going to have designated lengths. So if I want to figure out what these are, um, I'm going to have n1 many elements in the first subarray, and then n2 many elements where n1 is equal to q minus p plus 1, and n2 is equal to r minus q. So if you're wondering where n1 and n2 come from, these are those two things. I'm going to have this middle position, so that's going to be right before I go to the second part of the array. So this is a visualization showing you these two subarrays. So notice in this part, so from P all the way up to Q, this is all sorted. From Q position Q plus 1 up to R, this is sorted. But notice it's not sorted across both of them. So what I would like to do is I would like to be able to take this and I want to sort it. So that's the goal we're going to try to achieve here. So you might ask, Dan, how are we going to do this? So, you might say, okay, uh, so Dan, Dan, spill the beans. What are we doing? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two arrays. So, these are two brand new arrays. So, I'm going to create two brand new arrays. I'm going to call them L and R. One, two, three, ten. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of the elements of the first subarray into the first array. And then I'm going to have the elements I'm going to copy from the second subarray into the second array. So I create new arrays that are based on N1 and N2 here. 7, 11. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to introduce an extra element. So it's really just going to be that the lengths of these are not just simply 
simply n1 and n2, they're going to be n plus 1 and n plus 2. Sorry, n plus, n1 plus 1 and n2 plus 1. I'm going to introduce another element in. This is going to be a sentinel value. You may have heard of this before. This is where you have it where you want to, this makes this process a little bit simpler to program or describe to you as an algorithm. And the idea is quite simple is that when I'm going to do comparisons, it's going to be kind of like what we did with partition, except what I'm going to do is I'm going to have fingers that are going to be both on the, at the starting both at L and R like this. And I want to make sure that if my finger runs across this way, it doesn't go past the end of the array. So I'm going to use these sentinel values just to ensure that I stay within the bounds of the array when I make the comparisons I'm going to make shortly. So, so what am I going to do? So let us scan L and R. L and R. By keeping two fingers, two fingers, I and J, on positions starting at i is equal to 0 and j is equal to 0. So I'm going to start i and j and the first positions of each respective array. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan from the left to the right in this starting at p going all the way up to R. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a loop. I'm going to scan from left to right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my two fingers. So I have, so I'm going to start off with starting at this position. I'm going to have K that's going to scan from left to right. So I'm going to scan. So I'm going to scan left to right. taking the smaller of two values in L and R. So scan left to right, taking the small, smaller of two values in L and R. So I have my two fingers. Now for dramatic purposes, I'm going to get my two fingers out. So I have my two fingers here. I have i and j. Now, believe it or not, you know how to sort two partially sorted arrays already. Well, each one of these is sorted, right? So what I'm going to do, and this is how the process I'm going to refer to merge works. It works quite simple. Haha. -ha. So it works like this. So I'm just going to have my fingers on these two. I, I determine which of these two is smaller. So notice four, 4 is indeed not as small as 1, so I take 1. I'm going to copy this into the first spot here in my subarray. And that would increment this finger 1 further. Then I check, is 2 less than or equal to 4? Yes, I would put a 2. I would replace this entry here with a 2. And I would increment the finger. Then I would check 3 against 4. Well, 3 is indeed less than 4, so I copy it here. I increment the finger. And then notice that now 4 is most certainly not, uh, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not going to be that 10 is less than or equal to 4, right? So I'm going to copy a 4 after this. And then I'm going to check 5 against 10. 5 is less than 10. And then I have 7 is less than 10. And then I'm going to have 10 is less than 11. But now notice that, uh, that when I get over here, you'll notice that I get all the way here. Now it's going to be infinity versus 11. And most certainly 11 is less than the infinity. So you put 11 in the last spot. So let me just walk through this quickly. But believe it or not, all you're doing is just following it with your fingers. So I'm just going to copy from left to right, whichever is the smallest among these. And I move my finger across to keep track of where I am. So, so I start here. I I have one, I'm going to, because one is less than four, so I'm going to copy that in over here. So right now, 
what I have here is so far going to be partially sorted. Now, I check two against four. Now, keep in mind, K will scan from left to right. Each time it's going to play a game, whether L's value at currently at I is going to be less than or equal to R's value at J. So two is indeed less than or equal to four, so I'm going to put copy f two into here. I increase my finger. Three versus four, three is indeed smaller than four. So I copy three in here. I can increase my finger. So now I check four versus 10. Well, four most certainly is less than 10. So I move my finger for R by one. So now I have, now I have 10 versus five, five is smaller. I move my finger over by one. And then I have seven versus 10. Well, just keep in mind my, my K should be going up by one each time I play this little game with you. So I have seven. And then I increase the finger. So I have 10 versus 11, 10 wins. I have 10. I move my finger. And then finally, it's infinity versus 11. Now 11 is less than infinity, so I most certainly will, will pick 11. And we're done. Now notice that all of this is sorted, right? Now, what I've just described to you is the subroutine for merge chart called merge. So the pseudocode for merge is in the notes. And this is at the heart of merge sort. So the process that we use recursion is going to be somewhat different than it was in quick sort. But one thing I really want you to observe is that when I do this, I create two arrays, each of these when I make both of these, this takes linear time, linear in the number of elements in my subarray in total. Likewise, 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 when I scan through and I pick which of these two is larger, I scan from left to right through this range. So if I want to talk about the overall running time of this, well, it's big O of n1 plus n2, which this at most is big O of n, right? So it's still linear in the number of elements I'm looking at. So, so just be aware of this. So the next thing, so the another ingredient that I need is actually merge sort itself. So let's talk about that. So that's merge. But now we got to talk about how we use this. So this solves our sub problem. We're going to use this to design merge sort. So let's head on over here. So the first thing I really want to emphasize is that merge sort, merge sort, merge sort has worst case time complexity. Of, of big O of n log n, which is best possible for comparing n comparable objects. So I must stress that this statement is true for the most general types of objects you could compare, comparable ones. So these could be numbers, strings, and so on. But in more specialized cases, this statement may not be necessarily true. So you might ask, what exactly does merge sort do? So remember this is, uh, this is 
is a divide and conquer. Divide and conquer algorithm. This is the divide and conquer algorithm. So, where given input input s of n comparable elements. Now I must stress that s might be the entire array at some point. So there's a divide part and the conquer part. So here we go. So the divide part of this process is going to remind you a bit about quicksort. But you're going to notice that I'm going to try to make merge sort emulate the best case scenario of quicksort in a one way that we've seen actually. So if S has zero or one element, S must be sorted, right? This is no different than we had with quicksort. Otherwise, otherwise, two or more, two or more elements, two or more elements, uh, say, just for simplicity, I'm just going to say, say n elements exist. We're going to split this into two sub problems. We're going to split S. So when I say split, I mean that you're going to imagine I'm going to take this array. I'm going to break it into two chunks that are going to be intervals of the array. So they're not literally, it's not literally like I'm taking the array and I'm breaking it into two smaller arrays. It's that it's one array. I'm cleaving it into two sub arrays of that given array. So just to be very clear. So split S into two sub problems s1 and s2 or s1 contains the first ceiling of n over 2 remember ceiling means round up always the first the ceiling of n over 2 elements and s2 contains contains the remaining floor of n over 2 elements then you're going to sort s1 and s2 sort s1 and s2 so you're going to sort both of these Recursively, right? So the conquer part of this, so what we're going to, how it's going to put all these together now is it's going to, so how it's going to sort is as follows. Sort all inputs by merging, by merging this is using merge. So this is the merge I was talking about just a moment ago. So you're going to use merge. Uh, merging S1 and S2. Together. Where S1 and S2 are sorted. So notice that I'm going to take two sorted subarrays. I'm going to combine them or merge them using this merge process we just talked about. So keep in mind that every time I'm going to do this, I'm going to have two sub problems. I'm going to break these down as small as I can. I'm going to sort these smaller problems because when they're a size of one or zero, clearly those are sorted, right? So I'm going to build up using merge. I'm going to combine these partially sorted or or sorry 
overall the entire array is going to make the array partially sorted in some parts, but most certainly it will build up sorted subarrays that I can make larger and larger and larger as I keep applying merge. So let me write out the pseudocode for merge sort, and you'll say, hey, look, Dan, this looks, it reminds me a bit of quick sort. That, that's, 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 it's very nice. <laughs> it's very nice. But I just want you to pay attention to the order in which things are occurring. So. So here's the pseudocode here. Now you can make a driver function just like I did previously for a quick sort for this. So I have algorithm merge sort. I have a start and end, quite similar to what I had previously. Uh, the input, I have an array A of comparable, that says comparable, it's sort of melted there, comparable elements. And then we have integers start and end, just like we had in our previous algorithm start and end. And this is going to sort just like we had with quick sort. It sorts a sub start all the way up to a sub end. So it sorts this sub array. So let me just move on over here because I'll get a little ahead of myself. Let's head over here. So let's talk about merge sort. So I was just getting the pseudo code set up for us. So you've seen the main idea here. We're just going to, at the heart of this, I'm just gonna keep breaking the problem down into halves, roughly. And then I'm going to use, once I know that they're the smallest subarrays, I'm gonna use merge to bring them all together. So you're gonna see that I'm just going to find a middle position and then I'm going to split it into pieces. Then I'm gonna use merge to bring it all together. So. Just like I did with quick sort, I'm going to have if start is less than end, then I start by picking a middle position. So this is start plus end divided by two. So this is just getting the middle position. And then I'm going to apply merge sort twice. So remember, this is our S1 and S2 that I'm going to be working with. So I'm going to give it A, I'm going to give it start, and I'm going to give it mid. So just to be clear, this is S1 in my explanation there previously. Then I have merge sort A, where I give it mid plus one, and I have end. Now notice, unlike quick sort, I don't have like a pivot. I'm literally just breaking the problem into halves. So when I have my subarrays, I'm cleaving each of those subarrays into smaller halved subarrays. And then I apply merge at the end, just like I said I would. So this will have, I get the array A, I give it the start position. This would have been P in my discussion previously, this middle position would have been Q and R would have been end. So this brings it all together and that's, this is merge sort, believe it or not, that's it. So you might say, Dan, how does this play out? <laughs> so well, let's do an example with merge sort. I'm going to use the same input array that we had last time. I have 2, 3, 10, 1, 5, 7, 11, and 4. Now remember, in this process, I don't have a pivot anymore. That's not what quick, merge sort doesn't have this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, I'm going to, so remember, the middle here, so notice that I have this part, so notice I have eight elements. What mid will be is sitting right here. So you got to imagine like I'm taking this and I'm going to take it and break it into two chunks like this. So, so now I'm just going to simply 
recurse on this. So I have 2, 3, 10, 1. And then I'm going to recurse on this. 5, 7, 11, 4. And now the same idea. I would figure out the middle position. Middle position. Now, just as a reminder, remember, this is being applied recursively. So technically, the left half of this would be occurring first all the way down before we would approach, uh, approach the right half. Because remember, the order the recursive calls are happening, it happens where it's doing S1 first. So that's the first half. So just keep that in mind. So I just, the same thing happens again. 2, 3, 10, 1. And then, of course, this would get cleaved down the middle. Then I have 2, 3, 10, 1. So I'm done with this part here. So still, I'm still doing the divide part of this. So same idea here, I've cleaved it down the middle, 5, 7, then I have 11, 4. Then I cleave this one more time. I have 5 and 7. That's a little squeaky. 11 and 4. So notice that once I have produced and done all these recursive calls, in each of the respective cases, now keep in mind, after both of these recursive calls happen, which will happen at some point, when I reach, when I, at some point I'm going to get to a point where I only have one or zero elements. In that case, it will not execute this at all, and I'll just have a sorted subarray, in this case like two, and also have three. In these cases, to apply merge requires me to finish both of these recursive calls in the order I've provided them. So for example, what will happen after I've done this divide part, I'm going to do the conquer part. So, so now what's going to happen is that's going to take this and I'm going to apply merge. So now notice that this is a sorted subarray. This is a sorted subarray. I apply merge. This is sorted, right? Fortunately for us, it didn't change really at all, but keep in mind that merge will go through and it will sort these using the fingers like I did earlier. Now, now we're going to do the part where we're going to take S1 and S2. This would be S1, that's S2. I'm going to now pass, I'm going to now merge these. So now notice that to do this, it will sort them so that it's one and then 10. And then now notice that this part here, uh, now I have all of this built up. Uh, now, now that I have this recursive call has been uh, completed, so keep in mind, this is when merge occurs for this subproblem. Then what happens now, since both of these are done, I can do merge on this right here. So keep in mind, each of these I'm applying merge. So now notice that I have a sorted subarray. I have a sorted subarray. I'm going to go through and I'm going to sort them like I did using merge. So now I have one, two, three, ten, right? So what about my right, my right part here? So remember, this involves the second recursive call. So I have five, seven. Fortunately for us, this does, so remember, I call. This is when merge is occurring. Sorry, my right, this merge is sort of melted. It's merged with the board. Quite epic, I know. So then I do merge here. Because I can't perform merge yet until this is done. So I merge. So now I have 11 and 4. Merge will put these together. So it's 4, 11, like this. Then I go through and I apply merge. I apply merge, and now I will have to sort what I have here from my two sorted 
S1 then S2 here. So I have 4, 5, 7, and 11. Now, 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 we got to do our merge operation now, now that we have this part completed and that part completed. Uh, so now we can apply merge over the entire array. So now I take this and this and I apply merge. And this will go through all of, so I take my S1 and S2. I remember I go through that process where I have my fingers, just like I'm rubbing this away. I got one, two, three, four, five, five, seven. One, two, three, four, five, seven, 10 and 11. And now the whole array is sorted and we're done. So this is the completion of merge sort, and I've sorted the original array A. So that's an example execution of merge sort. Now, you might ask, Dan, what's the time complexity for merge sort? So let's talk about that. So let's go over here. Now, I'm not going to have as many things to say in this case, because a lot of the ideas I talked about with quick sort, they're going to be heavily applicable here with merge sort. Because this looks like, notice that when I split the problem down the middle like this, this should remind you a lot of a case I brought up during class. I talked about how if the element is very, if I'm splitting down the middle, that means that my two subproblems are roughly of equal size. So this was a situation we talked about when we talked about quick sort, right? So what does that mean for us? That means you're going to end up with an analysis that's very similar. Now, just to avoid, I, I don't want to go into all the details here. I'm going to encourage you to take a look at the notes. You can use a very similar justification that I did last time. But notice that I'll be a bit more careful in the notes. So if you found my explanation for quicksort just a little bit too high level, you might find my explanation for the best case of quicksort as one that easily adapt from from uh, for, for worst case of merge sort. So you'll find out quite quickly that the worst case time complexity of merge sort is actually very similar to the best case of quick sort. Now, the way it plays out is a little different though. But the result is the exact same as the best case for quick sort. So just to be clear, what I mean, I'm talking about the complexity. So just as a reminder, remember what I do in merge sort. I start off with my array of length n. I do two recursive calls, right? But remember, I go down, I half it. Now keep in mind, just to keep this simple, I'm just going to Assume n is a power of 2, so I know that these are going to be cleanly dividing. Otherwise, you would say these are approximately halves. And you'll notice this looks just like what I did when we talked about quicksort in the best case. It's quite similar. And so on. Now, the total time that I use is quite similar as well. How long does merge take? Well, it's linear in the number of elements I have to examine for my subarray, which in that case, in this case, it would be big O of n. So that's in total big O of n. Among all of the recursive calls of size n over 2, well, this is the number of operations depends on the number of elements there are. So n over 2, and in this case, it's n over 2. If you sum up both of those, you end up with big O of n. If you sum up these four recursive calls, you have big O of n. When you have all of these next level, we'll have n over 8s, so a whole bunch of n over 8s. So There'll be exactly 8 of them. So you'll have big O of n for each one of these groupings of problem sizes. Sorry, I'm getting very excited here. So by the very similar justification I gave last uh, with quicksort in the best case, you can argue that this, the number of problem sizes, when I have n, n over 2, n over 4, n over 8, 
It could be big O of log n, and you could say that the worst case time complexity, just like I had before, is big O of n log n, but this is in the worst case. Now, if you want to see an alternate way of explaining this and where the log n comes from, just see the notes, okay? So I have actually a more careful explanation in the notes, but for the purposes of your time, I just wanted to cover mainly the, the main ideas here. So if you want to see the, the juicy mayonnaise for your mayonnaise sandwich, just check out the notes. I, I walk you through where this log n comes from, if you really want to see it kind of broken out piece by piece. So you might ask, Dan, what about the average case and the best case? So I have good news and bad news for you. See, the good news is that in the worst case, it's big O of n log n time, right? That's good. That's wonderful. That's the best you're going to do with a, a general comparison-based sorting algorithm. At least uh, if you're familiar with this, uh, depending on where you take uh, CS340, uh, I often will prove that this is actually the best you're going to be able to accomplish in the worst case uh, for comparison-based sorting. So if I have n comparable objects, you're not going to do any better than that. Now, you might say, Dan, what is the average in the best case going to look like? Now, this is sort of a drawback in some ways, is that remember, how long does merge take? Well, it's linear in the number of elements you examine, but notice that I always, I always split about the middle. I always do this. I always split at the middle. So it always splits around the middle and it always does a linear amount of work for if I sum over all of the problems of a given size. So in these cases, it's actually going to be that it stays big O of n log n. So this is because, just as a reminder, it's because of merge always taking linear time in proportion to the number of elements that are your, you're merging over. And it's always that I break it down the middle. I always split and get S1 and S2, and that's always going to be roughly half each time. So this is why, if no matter how you cut and dice this thing, the behavior of merge sort is fairly uniform. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's some good news about that. It's yes, it's big O of n log n. That's much better than big O of n squared. But on the other side, you could also say, well, it always performs like this, right? Uh, so as I lose my friends, be gentle with your friends. Um, the, uh, so for example, uh, one thing I wanted to bring up is that sometimes people will adapt merge sort or quick sort into different variants, where what you do is you break the problem down to a certain size and then you use a different algorithm. Uh, for example, uh, some people will, for example, break down, say, merge sort down to a certain size. Say, for example, um, like say when it gets to down to a size of like 30 elements or something like that, then they apply one of the comparison-based sorting algorithms you may have seen in 115, such as insertion sort or bubble sort or selection sort. Uh, one that's very common is using an, another sorting algorithm called heap sort. Heap sort is another algorithm that runs in big O of n log n time, in the worst case. This one's actually based on something called a priority queue, which is a generalization of a queue. And it uses, underlying it, uh, something called a binary heap. And the idea is that you put dump all your elements into this priority queue based on a so-called binary heap. And what you do is you keep removing some elements out of this priority queue, and the order they give, they're given to you is actually sorted in the order that you'd like for sorting. But there are some ways you can optimize it further. So for example, you can have it where all it does is do it just rearranges elements in the array. That's often what people refer to when they think about heap sort. But uh, 
But yeah, there do exist other sorting algorithms. Heap sort's another example. I usually talk about this one in CS340. So, that being said, one other point I want to make is in merge sort, notice that in my merge phase, I always have to create a couple of arrays to dump the elements into. Those are the ones I use my fingers to move across. Um, those, uh, those take up additional space. That's often considered a drawback of merge sort as opposed to quick sort, which does no such thing. The only thing that takes up that additional memory is the call stack in quick sort. So that's all I have to really say about sorting. Um, beyond that, I just want to touch on one small detail. I think that's everything I have to say about sorting. I, I was actually thinking of something else, but if it comes up, I'll bring it up another time. So I'll say thank you very much and have yourself a beautiful day. I'll see you later.